whereas it's provided by Section 1631 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 1501, the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by an affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or the financial institution for the capital or current expenditure of the government. And whereas it is further resolved, whereas it is further provided by Section 64 of the Act, that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister of Finance considers it necessary to borrow an amount of US 1.5 million from the Special Development Resources or the Caribbean Development Bank, the bank, to finance the emergency cleanup and restoration of critical public infrastructure projects, the loan. And whereas the loan is repayable in 60 equal or approximately equal and consecutive quarterly installments on each due date. And whereas the loan payments commence on the first day of January, the first day of April, and the first day of July, and the first day of October of each year, after a grace period of five years following the date of the loan, or such later date as the bank specifies in writing. And whereas interest is payable at a rate of 0.7% per annum on the amount of the principal is both and outstanding. We resolve that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow US 1.5 million from the Special Funds Resources or the Caribbean Event Bank, the bank, to finance the emergency cleanup and restoration of critical public infrastructure projects, the loan. The loan is repayable in 60 equal, approximately equal, and quarterly installments. Loan payments commence on 1st day of January, the 1st day of April, the 1st day of July, and the 1st day of October of each year, after a grace period of five years, following the date of the loan, or such later date as the bank specifies in writing. Interest is payable at a rate of 0.75% per annum on the amount of the principal disbursed and outstanding. Mr. Speaker, this is a small, very small loan, Mr. Speaker, in terms of relativity of $1.5 billion for cleanup to pay for cleanup works after the Christmas, after the November rains, Mr. Speaker. You may recall that there, were, there was a sudden, the November 6, the, no, the numbers, the November 6 rains, Mr. Speaker, in the year 2022. You may recall that suddenly, one Sunday afternoon, the rains, the, the heavens burst and rains, the rain just came down, Mr. Speaker. And that affected, Mr. Speaker, the areas in the constituency of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. The rainfall was for three hours, Mr. Speaker, and it varied from 60 millimeters in Moshi to 157 in Rodney Bay, Mr. Speaker. The intense rainfall resulted in flash floods from the runoff in affected areas. There was serious flooding in the communities of Corinth, Grand Rivier, Moshi, Bexo, Mark Union, Rivier Mita, Law Monnier, Bois Kai Maje, Grosley Town, Balata, Bossejou, and Mondidon, Mr. Speaker. There was severe flooding in these areas, Mr. Speaker. There was a damage assessment done by, by NEMO and indicated a level two assessment based on the extensive damage caused by the rainfall and flooding event, Mr. Speaker. The sectors impacted included housing, education, public utility, agriculture, and tourism, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as such, the President of the Caribbean Development Bank approved the application for an immediate response loan, an IRL, from the government for the government of St. Lucia in order to address the damage caused by this flood event, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the loan will be used for the emergency cleanup and restoration of critical public infrastructure, including repairs to roads, drains, culverts, bridges and handrails, retaining walls in the areas of Castries, Grosley, Babolo, Ansel, and Canaries, and consulting services to provide an independent inspection and certification of the works under the project, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in June 2023, the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport completed designs for the repair works using standard designs within the department. CDB has reviewed the proposed, the proposed candidate for the inspection certification consultant and has found their qualifications 
and experience to be acceptable. Mr. Speaker, considering the extent of the damage incurred from the rains of November 6, 2022, government took the decision to undertake the reconstruction rehabilitation works before the receipt of the funds from the, in, from the IRL. It therefore means that the said loan will be utilized to reimburse the funds expended as a result of the rains and should not be treated as funds attached to new spending by the government of St. Lucia. So it will be used, the 1.5 million will be used to replenish, to reimburse the money spent already by the Ministry for Infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. In terms of repayment, Mr. Speaker, the CDB, the government of Lucia shall repay the amount withdrawn from the loan account in 60 equal installments in, and be pay, payable in five years, Mr. Speaker, at the interest of 0.75%, Mr. Speaker. And the government shall not be charged any commitment fee, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the $1.5 million, $1.5 million will be used, will be used to reimburse the ministry for the money they have spent, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the November rains, it didn't cut, the damage was not only for $1.5 million. The November rains, Mr. Speaker, caused damage of $9.5 million. Now, the rains caused damage as determined by the Ministry of Infrastructure of $9.5 million, Mr. Speaker. And a breakdown of the damage is as follows, Mr. Speaker. In Grosily, the damage was 4.6 million. In Cassius North, 254,000. In Babano, 600,000. In Cassius South, 215,000. In Ansari Canaries, 2.48 million. In Cassius of East, 1 million. In Cassius North, 42,000. In Cassius South and Cassius East, 30, 40 so thousand. In, in Mark and Cassius Office, the Mark Flowsack area and the Mark Riprap, total $70,000. In opposite the Bexo Gap, opposite the Mark Gap in Bexo, $52,000. In Deglo, retaining walls, $71,000. In total, Mr. Speaker, the damage from these November rains came up to $9.5 million. And the government could only, only borrow $1.5 million from US, from the Caribbean Development Bank. So we had to find the remainder, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, um, imagine that. The rains came in November 2022. <laughs> and we're getting $1.5 million in August 2024 in September 2024. So imagine if you had to wait for that money to repair, to repair the news where we are. And Mr. Speaker, today I don't want to go into any discussion on the Caribbean Development Bank because I'm a regionalist. I support the regional institutions, Mr. Speaker. But there were certain events at the Caribbean Development Bank, Mr. Speaker, that I hope never, never happen again in the history of this region, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, I am not saying so because the person involved was a solution national. I hope no one will ever go through what happened to the president of the bank, Mr. Speaker, recently. And whereas, Mr. Speaker, I support the bank. I will give my fullest support to the operations of the bank. The bank is a regional institution that has been led by prominent people, including solutions, Mr. Speaker. Never again, never again, Mr. Speaker, must we, as governments, allow what happened in the bank last year, or earlier this year. Never again, Mr. Speaker. I wouldn't go into, I've had my peace in life, Mr. Speaker, I will not say anything more on that matter. But it was a shame, Mr. Speaker. It was a shame. It was a disgrace for us to put 
a, an embarrassment for us to put a global technocrat, a man of such high reputation, Mr. Speaker, to put him through what we put him through, Mrs. What if we, we put him through in the bank over, over the last few months, Mr. Speaker? And I'm proud to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that the cabinet of ministers has agreed that this gentleman is of such high value that we have appointed him an ambassador at large for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. We cannot allow that talent to go waste, to go waste. We can't allow it, Mr. Speaker. We can't allow it. But, Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia will continue to work with, with the bank. But St. Lucia hopes that measures are put in place that will never allow that to happen again. Never. And we say so without fear of, without fear. <coughs> and I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, all the members of, of this honorable house, and I invite the member for Chosel to agree with me on that, Mr. Speaker. That should not happen. He's from Yeah, he's from Chosel, yes. This kangaroo caught me, Mr. Speaker. This kangaroo caught me, Mr. Speaker. This idea that, Mr. Speaker, I, I will I'll not go further, Mr. Speaker. All I can tell you is that the next, I hope that no one else, because the bank is about to, um, to is in the search for a new president, Mr. Speaker. We send the bank is in search of the bank very shortly. The bank will elect a new president. And there is no St. Lucian in the race. We have no horse in that race, Mr. Speaker. We have no horse in that race. But I hope that the new president is not, will never be put through what the last president went through, Mr. Speaker. What he went through. So, Mr. Speaker, we look forward to the services of Ambassador, when Ambassador Jean Leon, Mr. Speaker, to serve the people of this country, Mr. Speaker. And we are happy that he has accepted the post that the cabinet approved for him, Mr. Speaker. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.